Let's go ahead and dive into uh, topic number one, and that is the SEC has decided to delay fall football camp. Um, they they had it set up basically for them to play on Labor Day, right? So it was supposed to be July 28th. Well, then they pushed that back, and now they pushed back again. Programs will start camp on Monday, August 17th. Now, what that what that really does is it gives teams more time for strength and conditioning. Like before you get into the actual camp side of it, August 17th is when a lot of a lot of places are going back to school. Like a lot of kids coming back on campus, all that kind of stuff. I think they're wanting to see exactly what's going on. Um, it was it was July 28th and then it moved to August 8th and now it's August 17th. So you're trying to figure out the scheduling models. You're trying to figure out all these different things. Well, why don't we just go on and push back camp? Um, I, I think this is a no-brainer, and I think that all the other conferences will eventually do this as well, especially with the Big 12 announcing that they will be going to a 10-game season as well, and they're not likely to start until September 19th or September 26th. So if that's the case, why not just go this route, right? I don't understand the reason behind pushing back camp. I, I think we're wasting time pushing things back because I don't think anything's going to get better between then and now. I think the reason for camp is you want camp to lead into the first games, right? So if they were going to push the games back, okay. they, now, Be- it's a whole different conversation. Okay, you're 100% right on that. Okay, that's right. You don't want to end camp and then have a lull of nothing and then games months later, weeks later. That's not smart. Yeah, 100% accurate on that. The fact that they've pushed these seasons back so far is foolish. You take all your ability to be flexible and waste all that. Yeah, yeah, you're you're exactly right. I I am of the opinion, and and you are as well. We should have fired this thing off at the same time, right? Labor Day weekend. Go ahead and right. and just get in as many as you can. If it's gonna if it's gonna work, it works, and if it doesn't, you'll know immediately or you'll know quickly, and you can adapt and make decisions off of that. But pushing it back hurts everything about your flexibility all yes. of it yes you're you're 100 percent right because you are not going to know whether or not you can do something until you actually do it that's right? right like that's that's the the biggest part you can prep and you can do all these different things but until you actually get into a game and see what the ramifications are hey, why why go through all this pushing back now the camp part understand that because you want it to lead into the games because you you don't want to be prepping for games that you're not going to play for you know, at this point, almost two months. Yep. So your camp should be six weeks. Make sure it's the six weeks leading up to the season as opposed to let's do six weeks and then let's sit around for a couple of weeks until we get to play, if we get to play, right? So, um, so yeah, I think uh, I think this was a smart decision by the SEC. Gives them more time for strength and, and conditioning because obviously we know we need that. With what has happened in Major League Baseball, um, with Atlanta's pitcher going down with the Achilles injury, like all these tissue injuries, like these are going to be a problem because these guys, they can, they can try and work out during all of this, but they're not getting a full workout until they're on campus and until they are able to do it there in full speed, right? And, you, and I guess that that's the only argument as to why they pushed everything back is they wanted more time for strength and conditioning. I just feel like you get that in camp. Yeah, you, you get a lot of that. Um, Joseph Gomez said, dogs are alive in the NBA. And then Joseph said, uh, the schools aren't prepared as much as they should be, but won't say it. Part of the fear is if they stop, they are more likely to stop permanently. Yeah, and I think that's right. Uh, <laughs> Typhon the Greek jumps in. He said, uh, uh, hook them horns. I think that one's just for you, Chris. <laughs> so, it, yes, this whole thing, if it, they're pushing back, if they are pushing back for strength and conditioning, Right, because that your strength and conditioning program is different than camp, but Correct. all of this stuff works together, and you didn't get a full summer, you didn't get a spring to be able to work out. It, your body has got to get acclimated back into what it is like to go full football speed. True, you're, you're, I'm okay you're probably never going to get there this year, right? I, I wouldn't think. No, so you'll get there if if we don't have stops and breaks, and they continue to play, they get the plane. Yeah, they'll get there. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this, man. I mean, even in the NFL, we, everybody learns this the hard way. The first four weeks of the season, even in previous years, with camps, 
with with all of those things, with four preseason games, it doesn't matter. Until you start live hitting another opponent, you don't get into football shape unless you're playing football. Yeah, It's the only sport that's like that. You can prepare for baseball and you can prepare for basketball all day long, but you cannot get into football shape without playing football. It's why every year the the medical experts come out and tell you the holdouts are dangerous. Yes, I know these guys are running on beaches and they're getting in shape and all this other stuff on their own. Until you're playing football, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I I agree with you 100%. I mean, that's it. I think that's different.